and I thought Erebus was scary. Ghouls and goblins, we know it's part of the Halloween season, but something else will make you scream even louder, and it's something that's frightening for many people all year round. We're talking about budgets, bank accounts, and poor money management. So this morning, we have a money expert here to ease your financial fears so that you are not haunted all year round. Phil Putney, that's right. thank you so much for being here. Thank I know you you're me. a financial specialist with AFS Management. So let's first kind of start out by talking about one of the biggest fears that people have is if they lose their job, if they lose that that monthly annual income. Yeah, you absolutely. Kind of need to plan ahead for that. Yeah, it's a pretty big fear, and with the unemployment rate nearing uh, six percent, that's obviously a big fear for people. But with that, the best uh, planning is, you know, you've heard the old adage, the best offense is a great defense. Well, that's the case here. You know, I tell my clients, you need to have three to six months worth of expenses saved up ahead of time in an emergency fund just in case something like that happens. And that's very hard for people well, to do. It's very what hard do you to recommend? do. Well, the easiest way to do that is if you start a monthly savings plan through automatic transfer, maybe 50 or or $100 a month, going into that uh, designated emergency fund makes it a lot easier. You know, if you don't see the money, it's easier not mm -hmm. to spend it. And so. then $50 or $100 a month is not that much. I mean, you can still kind of manage your life right, without, exactly. without that amount of money. Well, what about just having the conversation about money with your spouse, uh, with your kids? Uh, it's one of those conversations that, unfortunately, when you first have them are arguments. <laughs> Sometimes they turn that way and it's a lot of couples feel like it's taboo. They don't want to talk, you know, talk about the money subject, but it's something you really need to do. It's vital, especially, you know, as you mentioned for married couples. Mm -hmm. You know, I recommend setting up some time monthly or whatever it happens to be to, to have that open discussion with your spouse. You know, what are your budgets? Where are you at today? What are your goals and, you know, what are you trying to accomplish? And what are your responsibilities? And exactly, what roles do each of you play? Mm -hmm. And then as you get closer to retirement, it's important to bring your adult children into that conversation as well. Mm -hmm. You know, if something were to happen to either of you and you're mm -hmm. not, not able to make those decisions, mm -hmm. they need to understand what you were trying to accomplish, what, what roles they play into it. Right. Um, um, one of my biggest financial mistakes was getting credit cards in college. Yes. Obviously, I didn't have enough income to, to spend the money I was spending. So I experienced credit card debt at an early age. Sure. Now there's kind of a phobia. Don't get credit cards. Don't get them. And that's not necessarily the best advice either, right? No. It's... Funny you mention that because six out of ten millennials don't even carry a credit card anymore. But credit cards can play a vital role in establishing that credit history, mm -hmm. um, which plays any more in getting insurance, obviously getting any kind of a loan. Even some employers are looking at your credit history. So what do you recommend? I mean, because the problem is you don't want to be tempted to use that card, right. overspend, and get yourself into trouble because you can't pay off the balance. So what should you do? What kind of card should you get? Well, pay it off on a monthly basis and keep the credit limit low, mm. something that you can't build up a, a large credit card debt with. Mm -hmm. And finally, the fear of just running out of money altogether. Yeah. You know, people are living longer. Uh, you know, how do you plan ahead for the rest of your life when you're no longer working? Well, that's a big fear for the baby boomers. The majority of them, in fact, about 61% of them, fear running out of money during retirement more than they do dying. Oh, yeah. You know, and we're all, you know, face it, we're living longer. Um, mm -hmm. And employers know that. They've moved away from pensions where they're guaranteeing you that lifetime income during retirement to a 401k where you, the employee, are now making the majority of the contributions and it's your responsibility. Right. So you need to have a plan. You know, that plan should really start as early as you can, putting as much as you can away towards retirement. At least 10% is what I recommend to my clients. And then once you enter retirement, it's important to understand how much you can take out of that account on a monthly or yearly basis without depleting it during retire. retirement. Right. Don't touch it beforehand. No, and a financial professional can play a vital role in helping you do just that. You mm -hmm. know, I tell my clients, Somebody has a plan for your retirement assets if you don't. Yeah. So whose plan do you want to follow? Right, and you have to take responsibility for that early. But if you don't, yeah. let's say you're 50 years old right now and you don't have much of a savings. Well, you still have a little bit of time, you know, and maybe you're not going to be able to retire as early as you'd hope, mm -hmm. you know, but until you work through the numbers and have a plan, you don't know. Yeah, and you kind of need to think about your life at that point. Absolutely. <laughs> when you're 60 or 70 years old, when you're younger, so that you can plan for that. And the closer you get to retirement, the less options they are. Yeah. All right. Well, Phil, thank you so much. It's thank really, you. really great advice. We really appreciate it.